Hi, I'm Matt Watson and I'm a Peatlands Project Officer for the Cairngorms National Park Authority. Today we're here just north of Granton on Spey to look at the wave damming and zippering technique. So the aim of this film is to break this process down into all of its subtle parts and provide a training video which operators can refer to in order to understand the process more easily. Stage one in the wave damming process, the initial decision you need to take is how wide you need to make the feature and the dam should be wide enough to span completely across the depression that's caused by the peat sagging on either side of the drain. In most cases that's typically three buckets wide with a 14 ton machine like this. In some cases though uh, where the oxidation effect is quite severe you may need to span out to five buckets wide. Once you've made that decision you're then going to insert the bucket into the turf. You're going to insert the bucket almost vertically into the peat to the full depth of the drain. Hook under slightly and pull back to open up a small space. What you don't want to do at that point is completely detach that peat mass or vegetation. So you need to then let go by bringing the bucket back out backwards. You can either do this sequence by doing the central opening first and then the two side movements, or you could do the two sides and then the center. At this stage, it doesn't matter. Stage two in the process, once you've created your opening, is to invert the bucket of the machine. And what you're now going to do is you're going to push downwards and bring the bucket backwards in order to shape that peat into the shape of a wave dam. Now again you can go about this sequence in two different ways. You've got a central void that you're trying to close. You can either bring the initial bucket back in the middle and then the two buckets on either side you drift slightly inwards to squeeze that middle bucket or alternatively you can bring the two sides in first obliquely and then bring the central mass of peat in to squeeze into the gap. Either way works and you might want to vary locally depending on the conditions. So having squeezed the peat back to create the shape initially, the next stage is to dress the actual dam head uh, by gently tamping across the top and compact the back face of the dam. So an action of just tamping in at the back and across the top. Once you've shaped the dam, what you now want to do is spend some time dressing out the void behind it. So what we're trying to do here is invert the back of the bucket and use that to depress the upstream edge of that space. And then with a tilting hitch, you can actually bevel in the two sides. And we're trying to create a nicely beveled hollow, uh, which livestock and wildlife can get in and out of should it go in there looking for water. One aspect that's quite important at this point is that we need to allow the water that sits in here the opportunity to escape. So here where we've got an old mound of drain spoil alongside the drain, James is going to very deliberately lower that and create an outlet. So after creating and dressing the actual dam and dressing out the hollow behind it, the last stage is to dress off the downstream face of the dam. So we need to move the machine back slightly and using the back of the bucket, just dress that to give it a nice angle and compact that peat down. At the same time, we want to make sure we're not actually knocking the height of the dam down too much because we want enough bulk there to force water out sideways. Having completed the wave dam feature, we're now going to move straight into the zippering process. In order to make sure we don't compromise the dam, we want to leave about a meter of ground behind the dam where we're not going to disturb that ground. So that bulk of peat, that intact peat, is going to shore up that dam. And then we're going to start with the first stage of the zippering. So initially, we're going to insert the bucket vertically into the peat, slightly to one side of their drain void space. And then we're going to pivot that bulk of peat across the drain void. The initial insertion, it's very important that you make sure that the bucket goes to the full depth of the drain base. And then the machine's going to move back slightly and repeat that same process on the opposite side of the drain, bringing that second bulk in so it keys in behind the first bulk, much like the zipper. 
to having moved those big bulks across the drain void we've now got some big voids behind those blocks to contend with so the next stage is to go out beyond those and reinsert the teeth of the bucket this time though we're only going to insert the bucket to about half the depth of the original insertion and then we're going to bring a second bulk of peat into the first void we'll repeat that on the other side before moving into a third stage which is to insert the teeth of the bucket into the turf beyond those and literally just scratch that turf back in. The final stage after completing those initial processes is to use the back of the bucket to tamp down that surface that you've created to squeeze all those bulks closer to each other and knit them together. Close over all those void spaces. On some features there's a pronounced line of spoil left by the original ploughing process which usually sits on the downstream face of the drain. We can use the same technique as a zippering to break through that spoil and to then depress it so that we don't have so much of a barrier to water passing across that drain space. So that is a complete set of processes for the zippering technique which are then repeated down the drain line till we get to the location for the next wave dam. Typical spacings in most applications are one wave dam feature roughly every eight meters. So we're going to have approximately six meters of zippering between each wave dam feature after allowing for a bit of intact peat behind the dam.